It was his gift, and he was the best. What I'm saying is just assume that this guy can hear and see everything that you're doing. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That's a pawn being moved off the board. And if I were you, I'd be looking for the next piece. No, you can't stop him. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions. And today I want to talk to you about something that a lot of people are getting kind of hung up with and it's called for this episode assumption testimony well the example I'm going to use to start off this scenario is something as simple as running a red light and the example that I want to use is something that um, it was somebody that actually had this situation or something similar to it that happened and basically he was traveling down the road and instead of stopping at a yellow light he went on through officer pulls him over now we know because of Ren v US which most everything's gonna be put over here so Ren v US states that the stop itself is legal now the stop itself is not something that we're going to have in question it's the statements that come afterwards. And this is one of the reasons why I say get the police report because you can't argue with yourself. Well, in this situation, the officer made an assumption that the red light was run because of the timing in which he noticed the other person's conveyance. And keep in mind, running a red light is not a crime because there is no one that can be confronted as required by law. And we have a confrontational system. There is no one that has been injured as required by law because you have the right to confront your accusers. So when we're speaking about traffic infractions, I speak of them often not as crimes, but safety issues. And this is something when we're talking about the crime, the last aspect is a police officer witnessing a felony. This is not a felony unless there's damage to person or property. So when we're talking about in the realm of running the red light, we don't have a crime. We have an infraction. Police have an opportunity to exercise officer discretion. So because everything that's done is done with qualified immunity until it's done through a willful act or a means of ignorance, which means they don't know that what they're doing is not legal. We also talk about how a police officer comes into court and that's done through amicus brief because they're not testifying as a witness. They're testifying as an expert to what is being placed before the court. And then I talk about a traffic court is not an actual court because it's not a court of record so it's an administrative procedure it is not a court it's fictional so when we're talking about that one of the things that you can ask because we understand what hearsay is hearsay is something that is not backed up by evidence generally whenever they're they're actually given a description one of the things that you can ask for is their body cam footage or even their dash cam footage to kind of support or contradict or impeach their testimony. And what happens is they can't use assumptions, but that is something that they're using because their assumption is an inference of you committing a crime or an infraction, which they chose to follow policy versus actually following law. And what happens is you have this thing with Terry v. Ohio, and it speaks on the reasonable suspicion, which is required 
on the after effects of Ren v. United States. And it speaks to reasonable suspicion defined through the officer must be able to articulate more than an inchoate or unparticularized suspicion or a hunch of criminal activity. Because even asking for your identification, Florida v. Royer states you do not have to participate in their investigation. Why? Because you have the right to remain silent. Hybel v. Nevada even illustrates to reinforce Terry v. Ohio's statement in this a hunch of criminal activity because Hybel states you don't have to turn over ID until they articulate the activity of a crime to which you may or may not be involved in. And again, the choice of garnishing revenue versus the choice of enforcing law. And remember, these choices are done through the power of words because the words have power. When it comes to his word against yours, cross-examination is what proof do they have? That is the one question that, ha that you have to ask. And as simple as, thank you for your testimony. What is it that you have available to this court that allows your testimony to stand as something other than hearsay? Simple question. Has to be supported by proof. If there is no proof to support the testimony, you ask for it in an oral motion. I hereby stricken this testimony in its entirety from the record as there is no supporting evidence. These are things that, again, allow you to set the groundwork to move on because, again, these things allow the judge to cover their own ass and allow you to get to where you're trying to get to when you're trying to more or less fight back on these citations. Now, here's a couple of cases where it, it allows for a little leeway for the police, but it's something that you can still fight back against. And it's High and V, North Carolina. A police officer's reasonable mistake of law may give rise to reasonable suspicion needed to justify a traffic stop. Now, a lot of times, they're using the stop because in the pretext of that is reasonable suspicion. Because you know, as I always tell you, they stop right there. Because in Terry v. Ohio is something they must articulate as the participation or particularized suspicion or hunch of criminal activity. It still requires a crime, even for the traffic stop. I'm gonna say that again, because again, then officer discretion rolls in. Then we go into Illinois v. Rodriguez. What is generally demanded of the many factual determinations that must regularly be made by government agents not that they are correct, but they always be reasonable. Because when you're talking about, again, the context of reasonable in the legal forum, you're talking about something that can say, hey, that has caused an injury, or that is about to cause an injury. Not that someone speeding is a crime, because that does not say write a citation. That only allots for Ren v. United States, for the, tr the stop itself. Anything beyond that is something that has to have a, an attachment to a crime or it becomes illegal. Now, this last one I'm going to put up because it sums up everything that I'm talking about even in this situation. Because when we're talking about even in Hind v. North Carolina and Illinois v. Rodriguez, it seemed as if the Supreme Court was letting police off of the off of the hook. Well, in this case, they're not. Because US v. Chan Ch Chan, that's just yeah, that. Traffic stop based on a mistake of law is never lawful. This is not the first time you've heard me go into that because this case actually stems from another case that I spoke about where I talked about a misapprehension of a miscomprehension of law 
is not a legal stop. So keep that in mind. Even when they're using words like reasonable, it's within the confines of law, not that that you're finding in a Webster's Dictionary. So keep that in mind and always keep fighting back. Make them show proof of anything that they're using against you. And the biggest thing is you cannot argue with yourself. This is also one of the reasons why I tell people keep your emotions out of it because the law is not emotional. It is precise with precise words and meaning. So thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you. And I want to give a shout out to Lee. He put $10 on it. Charles, he put two on it for the cup of coffee. And I appreciate you, Charles. And Robin put 20 on it. And Jorge put 30 on it. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep growing. That's why these videos are becoming more in-depth. And that's also why the podcasts are becoming longer. Because we have better equipment. We're having more time. And we're also being able to set, a, set aside designated places for these things to happen. And the podcast itself, you can become a monthly supporter of 99 cents. $4.99 or $9.99. Just log on and let's keep growing on that. As far as the channel, we still have Apple Pay, which can be paid through Messenger. Google Pay, which can also be paid through Messenger. Zelle, all you need is the email from your bank to my bank. PayPal, which is the Supreme Decisions. Venmo, and you know my favorite, Cash App. And if you do not have it already, the link is in the description. So thank you guys. Let's keep donating. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. I love you guys. Until next time.